This is MSJ Chem, and in this video, I'm going to look at calculating ionization energy. So that involves calculate ionization energy from spectral data, which gives the wavelength or frequency of the convergence limit. So I'm going to start by looking at the convergence limit. But before we talk about that, we'll have a look at the hydrogen emission spectrum, which we've seen in a previous video. So here we have the main energy levels in the hydrogen atom starting with n equals 1, which is the lowest energy level or the ground state, then moving on to n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, n equals 5, and all the way up to n equals infinity. And what you'll notice is, as the energy levels increase in energy, they get closer together until they converge. And you also may remember from the previous video that electrons can transition between energy levels. If they absorb discrete amounts of energy in the form of photons, they can transition from lower to higher energy levels. And if they emit discrete amounts of energy, they can transition from higher to lower energy levels. So let's talk about the convergence limit. So in an atom, the highest possible energy level corresponds to the frequency at which the lines converge. By determining the frequency at which the spectral lines converge, and that's known as the convergence limit, the ionization energy can be calculated. Next, we look at ionization. If an electron absorbs energy, it can transition to a higher energy level. But there'll come a point where the energy that it's absorbed is enough to remove it from the attraction of the nucleus, and therefore we say the atom has been ionized. So if enough energy is supplied, the one electron in the hydrogen atom can be promoted to the infinite level. And that's represented by this arrow here. The electron is transitioning from the n equals 1 energy level to the n equals infinity energy level. At this point, the electron has been removed from the attraction of the nucleus and the atom has been ionized to form the H plus ion. And this process can be represented by this equation here. We have the hydrogen atom as a gas and it's being ionized with the electron being removed from the attraction of the nucleus. So next we look at how to calculate the ionization energy. The amount of energy required to ionize the hydrogen atom corresponds to the energy the electron would emit if it fell back down to the n equals 1 energy level from n equals infinity. So this arrow represents the electron transition from n equals infinity down to n equals 1. And that corresponds to the amount of energy required to ionize the hydrogen atom. The transition from n equals infinity to n equals 1, which is represented by this arrow here, produces a line in the UV spectrum with a wavelength of 91.2 nanometers. And that's the convergence limit. And the final point, the ionization energy can be calculated from the wavelength or frequency of the convergence limit. And the convergence limit is the frequency at which the spectral lines converge. So next, we'll have a look at an example of how to calculate the ionization energy. And we'll start by looking at this equation here. So this equation, E equals H times nu, nu is a Greek letter. E stands for energy, and that's measured in joules. H is Planck's constant, and that has a value of 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joules seconds. And nu stands for frequency, and the unit is seconds to the negative 1. The second equation that we need to use is this one. C, which is the speed of light, which is a constant, is equal to lambda times nu. Lambda is wavelength, and nu is frequency. So the speed of light is 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second to the negative 1. Lambda is wavelength in meters, and nu is frequency, and the unit is second to the negative 1. So next we're going to use these two equations to calculate the ionization energy. So here's the information that we were given previously. The transition from n equals infinity to n equals 1 produces a line in the UV spectrum with a wavelength of... 91.2 nanometers, and that was the convergence limit. So we were given the wavelength of the convergence limit, and it's 91.2 nanometers. So we need to find the frequency at the convergence limit. So we use this equation here. The speed of light equals the wavelength times the frequency. So we input the value for the speed of light, which is 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second to negative 1. And then we need to change our wavelength 
from nanometers to meters. So that's what I've done in this step here. And that's multiplied by nu, which is the frequency. So by rearranging this equation, I get frequency equals the speed of light divided by the wavelength in meters. And that equals 3.28 times 10 to the 15 s to the negative 1. So now that I've calculated the frequency at the convergence limit, I need to use the next equation to calculate the energy. So I'm going to use this equation here, E equals Planck's constant times frequency. So I input my values. Planck's constant has a value of 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34. And the frequency, which I've just calculated, is 3.28 times 10 to the 15. And that gives me an energy of 2.17 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. So what we've calculated here is the energy required to remove one electron from the attraction of the nucleus. So the next step is to multiply by Avogadro's constant to get the energy required to remove one mole of electrons. So when we multiply Avogadro's constant, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23, times the energy required for one electron, which was 2.17 times 10 to the negative 18, we get a first ionization energy for the hydrogen atom of 1,310 kilojoules per mole. A quick look at the data booklet reveals the first ionization energy for hydrogen to be 1,312 kilojoules per mole to the negative 1. So our value here is correct to three significant figures. So that's all for this video and don't forget if you look in the description of the video you can find a link to a practice worksheet complete with answers.